Yo, what's good, my fans? Welcome back. We hit a special milestone today. I hit 500 subscribers. That is a ridiculous amount of people, and I'm so grateful for each and every one of you for clicking that subscribe button. I promise two things, two videos specifically. This is one of them. Now let's go ahead and go to my settings and graphics, because I know a lot of people are interested in those. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Let's get critical ops in here. I want to go ahead and see those uh, graphics. Yeah, let's um, uh, let's uh, click that. Gonna um, click the settings in the top right. Okay, so we are here. So now, as you can see from the. Uh... Okay, guys. On a serious note, here are my actual settings. If you guys want to directly copy it, that's up to you. If you want to just use it and then feel like you need to change something, that's completely fine too. But for now, let's go ahead and get right into it. I like to quick switch to my primary weapon. Now auto equip weapon on pickup. I turn this off because in case I'm on an eco round and I have deagle and I get those two picks and I still have ammo for a third, then I don't want to pick up a shotgun and like have myself vulnerable to dying to from, from people peeking me. Now automatic weapon swap, keep this on just in case you need that. Automatic swap to knife, keep that on. Dynamic crosshairs, I really like static for a, a while now and I kind of kept it like that for now. Whenever I turn it on, I kind of just miss, so I just stopped using it. Hit markers, those are really helpful. There's no other way to know if you hit somebody other than the audio cue, but even the audio cue doesn't accurately tell you if it's through smoke or flash. Damage indicators, this is super, super helpful. Uh, only time it's not is when you die. When you die, it does not accurately tell you where you died from, but if you get hit, the damage indicator will show you where you got hit. Now crosshair size, I rock 30. The smallest ones, I like a, I like to keep it small, but I wish it was smaller. So hopefully that just comes in the next coming updates. Now show HUD, this is kind of obvious. You need that mini map. Control opacity, 20%. I wanna know where my buttons are, but not completely be oblivious to not seeing my ammo. Dynamic movement pad, I like to keep this off because the static movement pad is really helpful for muscle memory. So when your thumb touches that part of the screen, you will move in that direction. And I think that's pretty helpful. So that's why I keep it at that. You guys can already see right here that I use low settings. 1.2 and 0.85. These are extremely super, super low because it's low. I need a high acceleration to make up for the turning. And that's basically what it is. I use those X and Y to aim and have like really, really small uh, micro adjustments. Also not sacrificing my ability to turn. Now my sniper scope sensitivity is gonna be stuck on 180%. Used to be lower, but I wanted to hit more flicks. So I, I decided to bring that up a little. I don't invert the Y axis. Aim assist, self-explanatory, turn it on. I used to use gyro, but not anymore. I only liked it with the sniper. And because I can't have a setting that only uses just the sniper, I just decided not to use it at all. Disable shoot button aim. Now this is only used if you have claw setups where you have a separate input for aiming than you're shooting. So what does this mean? That means, for example, if I'm using my thumb to aim, I am not going to use that same thumb for pressing the shoot button. That is gonna be designated for a left index finger or right index finger or something other than that thumb that I just mentioned. Now, if you do use thumbs, please keep this on as it will allow you to keep aiming with your thumb. Now, level of detail and texture quality, I keep low, and that prevents me from getting distracted from the little details of the map or particles or whatever it may be. This just allows me to clearly see what's not an enemy and what is an enemy. Shaders helps with the lighting. It helps light up dark places and kind of dims bright places. So I feel like it helps more than it hurts. I keep it at medium. I don't keep it above that because then the, then the grounded windows start to get tinted white, which I don't like because then I can't see. So that's why I keep it at medium and not anything higher than that. Anti-aliasing, I don't know what it does because I, I didn't notice a difference of it. But if, if I keep dropping frames, I'm probably gonna stop using it because it doesn't even make any difference for me. Now, animation quality, I'm not sure exactly what it does, but I assume it helps with the movement of the character models. But if that's completely inaccurate, then I don't know why I have that on high. Now, tracers and particles, these are super, super important information. So what, what do tracers do? They tell you where a bullet is from, where the bullet is going to. It also shows you how much ammo is left. It also can be seen through smokes. Now, particles, this is kind of controversial because I know a lot of my friends don't use this, but when I do use it, I can see when people don't have armor, when I think that's pretty helpful information. So I can start like thinking to myself, oh, this guy's gonna get aim punched. So I think that's really, really helpful. The downside is like the particles that don't come from blood 
are kind of distracting to the gameplay. I think the upsides definitely outweigh the downsides for particles and tracers, so I keep them both on. Environmental particles I do not use because they're kind of distracting. I mean, there's no reason to have snow or rain on your screen, and I don't think it's helpful to the gameplay whatsoever. As you can see from my HUD and from my hand cam, this is how I play. I use four fingers, and my left index is used for three actions, scoping in, crouching, and jumping. Now for jumping, you can notice that that button's significantly lower than my crouch, and that means that I have to curl my index finger almost all the way to touch that jump button. Same thing applies to the aim button, or the scope in button for the sniper. I bend my finger halfway and then press the screen. That's how I use those three buttons on the left, and I like to designate that to a separate finger for quicker inputs. Now the moving pad is down there, kind of just in a spot, and the minimap, uh, a lot of people just like to keep it in the top left or top right corner, but I'm not like that. I don't have a good enough peripheral vision to look at the top left uh, or top right, so I like to keep that towards the middle so my eyes can kind of pick up on it and see where the red dot is when it appears. Quick switching, you just generally want to put that where your thumb is going to be most convenient. The shoot button up there with my finger, and in the same place is my reload button, kind of conveniently right next to it. So if I want to reload, I'll just shift my finger a little. And for my, my shop and diffuse button, I put in the middle because it can be used with two thumbs. And if I wanted to move and diffuse at the same time, so like fake diffuse, I would use my right thumb. So if I wanted to be able to aim and diffuse, I want to use my left thumb for that. I got more videos coming soon. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my 500 special and peace out guys.